Professor Dan Shechtman has become Israel's new hero after winning this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry. He came to tell his story of trials and tribulations and finally triumph to the foreign press who gathered at the Begin Center in Jerusalem. I am a spearhead, but behind me there are thousands of scientists, and I represent them all, who study quasicrystal, and I'm sure are very happy that our science has been recognized as, as a, such an important science. Shechman won the Nobel for his 1982 discovery of quasicrystals, which have a mosaic-like pattern of atoms that never repeat, what's called non-periodic crystals. Can you explain to us briefly what your discovery consisted of? The Academy has said that it forced scientists to rethink their understanding of matter, which is a, a paradigm shift. Yes, it's a paradigm shift. Uh, well, as I have explained uh, in the meeting before, and you probably have some of that, um, the science of crystallography for 70 years, from 1980, from 1912 to 1982, uh, had a definition of a crystal, which means that the crystal is ordered and periodic. I found a crystal which is ordered and not periodic. So the, it's not that whatever was said before was wrong. It was correct. But, but it had, the field had to be expanded and include more crystals that are not periodic. And so the, the paradigm shift is the fact that, that the field has to be expanded and include, so it is now more inclusive uh, of other options of crystal order. Shachman got his PhD in mechanical engineering at Haifa's Technion Institute. He's the 10th Israeli to win a Nobel, making Israel second only to the U.S. in collecting the prize. Not bad for a country 63 years old. Tell me, Professor Chuckman, what went through your mind when you got that phone call? Well, uh, it was a, a total surprise uh, for me. First of all, I didn't know that that date was the day of the announcement. And then that lady from the academy uh, called and she said, please wait on the line. There is a very important announcement. The president of the academy wants to talk to you. <clears throat> and then I started to guess what was going on, but it was not clear to me that this is it. And since I didn't know that well, it was the day of chemistry. And then the president of the Royal Swedish Academy of Science talk, spoke to me, and then some other dignitaries, and one of them at least was a friend of mine, a good friend of mine from the academy. And um, I, was, I was elated in a, uh, in a subdued way. I am not uh, the type that uh, jumps up and down and screams and yells and pounds on the, on the walls. No, I was just sitting there in my office and contemplated for a while. And then after a while, I called my wife. She was in her office in the university. And she was elated and ooh, just came immediately uh, to Very visit exciting. me at Technion. And then, uh, you know, so many people knocked on my door and came in and a real celebration. A real University. celebration, a spontaneous nice. celebration. And Shechman's discovery of quasi-crystals is a huge step forward for science, but not one that will change the way we live. As opposed to the greatness of the scientific achievement, the applications of quasi-periodic materials are few and far between. But Shechman's Nobel win is as much about the triumph of the human spirit as it is about science. His initial discovery was rejected and ridiculed for years by the scientific community. It even got him kicked out of a prestigious U.S. research group. Uh, my colleagues did not accept my results. Uh, most of them didn't think highly of me. For years, one of the most famous Nobel laureates in chemistry, American Linus Pauling, used to say of Schechtman that there are no quasi-crystals, only quasi-scientists. In my case, I knew that I was right from day one. Do you think there was something about the fact that you are an Israeli and you grew up here in your childhood that in some sense trained you, maybe even before you knew it, to stick by your guns? Definitely so. <clears throat> I think so. We, we are educated to be free-spirited in this country. In many cases it's good, in other cases it's not good. But this is the education. Now, the education is not by teachers. The education is your family, your friends, your, the system 
So we are free thinkers, and this is why so many Israelis are entrepreneurs and high-tech leaders. We are free thinkers. Um, of course, uh, the education system uh, gives you the tools, but the spirit is there from a very early age. Many in Israel now worry if the country can educate the next generation of scientists after major budget cuts over the last decade. You said earlier that you felt humiliated by the government cuts to yes. higher education. Yes. Um, are you confident that this government is doing enough to, to fund science and that Israel will still be on an upward movement towards more Nobel Prize, Prizes? Well, uh, this year the budget has improved uh, meaningfully. If that trend will continue, then we are on the right track, and I praise this government on this issue. We should have more funds and better control of the system of the education until university. In high schools, in primary schools, in kindergartens, we should have a system that works so that the candidates that come to higher education will be better candidates. They will be educated, not only in knowledge, but also know about the world, know how to behave in the world, and have values such as honesty. Science is the most honest thing you can think of. You, the, the system will not accept liars. You cannot lie in science. And if you do, you will be caught, and you are away from the system. You are rejected. Shechman believes good teachers who inspire and encourage their students are essential. He still remembers a compliment from his physics teacher, which for him made all the difference. We need excellent teachers that can not only teach, but also educate and be a role model. This is the challenge. We need excellent teachers. In order to have excellent teachers, you need to pay them well. Shekman says he had the opportunity to talk about that with Israel's Prime Minister after he gave him a quick tutorial. I understand that you gave Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu a little bit of a lesson about your field. And, and how, how did he respond when you had, you had a meeting with him? Oh, he was, uh, he was a good... Uh, he understood what I was talking about. He's, he's, he's bright. He, he really understood what I was talking about and he asked uh, proper questions and we had a good, uh, a good scientific communication. Jordana Miller, JN1 News, Jerusalem.